Yes, people, welcome back to the 1894. I'm Hugh, and I've got Dara with me for a September preview. It's an action packed month, multiple competitions. Let's get into our thoughts. Okay, Dara, the football is well and truly back. The Premier League, the Champions League, and the big one, the Carabao Cup, all this month. Six games to talk about here. We'll just kind of gloss over them and give us give give our thoughts and see what we think what we can get from each game and what each game means the significance yes it is only september but when you're a club that wants to win absolutely everything which we do every year every game kind of counts first game we have leicester away at the time of recording this video uh we've just done our preview and this will go out probably two or three hours before kickoff of that game but if you want to see our thoughts on that game specifically go check our preview which came out yesterday but uh, this is obviously the first Premier League game of the month. Uh, it's one of three, I believe, Southampton as well, and Chelsea. What do you think about this game? I think this sets the tone for the rest of the month. Uh, the rest of the game, I think we they'll have already seen what we think about it. It's going to be difficult, but I think we're going to have what, what's necessary to just go out and win. I think now, this is going to come back and bite me in the arse, but I think we'll, we should win at least two of those games, at least two or three games that we have. Chelsea's going to be tough, but this game... It's going to set the tone, like you said. It's just going to set the tone now for the month. Yeah, so the Premier League, like I said, it's Leicester, Southampton at home, uh, and then at the end of the month, Chelsea away. But in between them, we've multiple competitions as well. Now, after the Leicester game away, we come back to Manchester and we play Leipzig in our first Champions League game since losing in the final last May. I'm sure we all remember that so fondly. Um, this game I've seen is not selling tickets, according to uh, some city aggregators. Apparently, the city are asking questions as to why fans aren't coming. Um, and I listen, I am guilty. I, I cancelled my tickets for this game as well. Uh, I, I just, I've got college. I can't go. But listen, this is the first Champions League game since we got knocked out of the final. Uh, I think similar to the last game, this does set the tone for the group. Now, uh, you would think the group is going to be dominated by ourselves and PSG, but Leipzig will be coming to Manchester with the idea of hopefully causing a stir and putting themselves in the mix for second place. So it could easily be a banana skin, Rel. Yeah, Kevin Campbell earlier on, he said the, the Leipzig midfield, they came out and said on paper, people are expecting City and Paris to just go through, but they have that bit between their teeth, they want to just go out and they just want to go out and prove people wrong. So they did last season, they went out and pretty sure they knocked out United in their group and and they're, um, they're just, they have something that, like you said, they have a point to prove, they're going to go out there, they're not going to be a pushover. They're not nearly the team they were last season, don't get me wrong, I think they've lost a couple of players, but they're not going to be a pushover by any means. Absolutely, and they, they've, they're coming to us and into this group with absolutely nothing to lose. Like we've just said a second ago, ourselves and PSG uh, probably, uh, without being too arrogant, almost feel like we're entitled to go through, which is why it's important for Pep and us as fans probably to a certain degree to not just assume we're going to get three points off Leipzig. It's a tough game. They're a good team. They're capable of causing a stir. They knocked Man United out, like Dara said a second ago. After this, we are still in the end. again, we play Southampton. Myself and Dara are going to this game. Um, I think this, on paper, you would think is a game where we, we should just pick up three points. But with the serious congestion this month, Pep, I, I don't think is going to be able to put out his strongest team uh, every single week. So, once again, Southampton are a team that year in, year out are, you know, doing their best to avoid relegation. And similar to Leicester, if they could take a point or, or completely shock the world and, and beat us, it's a massive statement from them. Um, what do you think about that game? Um, yeah, it's one of those, like you said, they're not going to have to, we're probably not going to have the full team out, but it's going to be probably Foden will come back in for that game, Jesus will come back in for that game, um, Edison obviously he'll be playing, but it's going to be some of those, it's going to be one of those games, I think, Southampton, where players are going to put their hat in, or sorry, put the name of the hat to be played in these bigger games. So like, Jesus, if he has a good game, he'd be played for, like, Paris, so he'd be played for the next Leipzig game. Same with uh, Foden. Obviously, as much, as good as he is, as good as everyone knows he is, coming off an injury, he's going to have to prove himself before he can come in and just be that number one winner. Just be that winner who we know he can be. Because, again, Sterling would have his place at the minute because he's only coming off an injury. So, it's going to be one of, it'll be one of those games, but I, I think players are going to go out again with a point to prove saying, I want to be in this team. Like, they'll probably dispatch us out of Hopefully, they'll dispatch us out of town. So, I have a feeling they're going to be fighting for their lives this, this year. You know, they've lost Danny Ings, they've lost a couple of centre halves as well. Like, it's going to be, they're going to want to pick up every point possible. And they have the quality. We've seen they've had the quality. We just about held them out last year. We only beat them one nil at their tour, and now they're coming over here. So, I, I'm, I'm confident enough about it. But, Again, none of these games are push-offs. None of these games are big levels are push-offs anymore. After the Southampton game, we come to the Carabao Cup. Now, if you support any team in England that's not Manchester City, you view this game against Wickham at home as an absolutely nothing game that you should just win with your, your under-15s. But 
we know from winning it four years in a row and going for our fifth in a row, may I add, that if we win it this year, which I'd put money on us to win regardless of what happens, we become the all-time leading trophy or League Cup winning team. You know, like Since the beginning of the League Cup, we will have won the most. Uh, I think at the moment we're tied with Liverpool. So that would actually be a pretty, pretty cool achievement. But listen, this Wickham game and the Southampton game before that, they're both sandwiched in uh, between duos of, of really tough games so I think you touched on Foden there a second ago and I think these two fixtures are ones we, he will aim to, to put in a big performance because he will get a chance uh, obviously Sterling will most likely start against Leicester which uh, is, is the first game at the time of this coming out uh, and if he does well he'll play against Leipzig you can't just throw Foden in if Sterling's playing well but the Southampton and Wickham game will be a chance for Sterling to maybe get some rest and to give Foden some rotation and it's a chance, like Dara said, for players to put their hand up and try to get themselves involved in the next fixture, uh, which is Chelsea away. Now, Chelsea away is the first of uh, three really tough fixtures. One is in October, but we'll talk about that in our, in our October preview. And then PSG away, of course, as well. Chelsea away will be the toughest game we have had since the Champions League final, without fail. Chelsea are a team that are desperate to win the, or the, the Premier League now. They won the Champions League. Tuchel is building a really serious team. Lukaku was probably the final piece to their jigsaw. They are a serious, serious force. Um, and they will be there or thereabouts coming the end of the season. And this game could literally define the margin. It could separate the margin come the final game of the season. Um, this game and the game the Eddie had further on the season. Dara, uh, I don't think there's any point in talking about the Wickham game. It's going to be uh, a no-fan, hopefully, Carabao Cup easy win. The Chelsea game. This is probably probably the most important game of the month. Yeah, it's definitely up there. Anyway, <laughs> like it, it's it, it is the most important one, especially if you're if you if you're a person like right mindset in the league. This is the most important game. It's going to be one of the most important games of the season. It's like like you said, Chelsea. <clears throat> they've won Champions League. They've only gone out and improved. They've got Lukaku in. It was unbelievable. Like we saw him against. We saw him against Arsenal. I watched him against Arsenal. Thought it was unbelievable. His movement, just getting behind the cat to the back post, now it's unrivaled. Like for such a big fella as well. Like his movement, he moves like he's just so light in his feet, and that could be that could be a very very that could be a bit that'd be a very big challenge for Diaz and Laporte. Especially Laporte hasn't got the greatest turn of pace in the world. But again, like I said, I said this for every game. We have the quality to be anyone in the world. We have the quality to hold out Chelsea, whether it be at the back or even in the midfield. Once he doesn't go at Madigan, like he'll go out and he'll start. He'll play the normal system. Next thing you know, we'll we'll beat them two 0 <laughs> We'll talk. We'll show. We'll show how good we really are if he just plays a normal system. I think he will play a normal system. It's not a. It's not a Champions League final. He'll go out. He'll play a normal system. We'll probably beat them and just kick on. But you never know. Again, they're a very good team. All they've done is improve. But I think Pep's gonna go right. I don't want to repeat that Champions League final. I don't want to lose again and go and I th- I think we'll I think we'll come out there either with a point or to full three. I don't think we're going to lose. I think we'll have our mindset too much in it to lose. Yeah, we know Chelsea definitely in the last six months anyway have been a bit of a bogey team for us. I think they've beaten yeah. us the last three times we've met. Albeit all three of those times they weren't either our best system or our best players available. Yeah, you can tell me I'm making excuses if you're a rival fan, but that's the way I'm going to look at it. But yeah, listen, in terms of the Premier League, before I go into the last game, Leicester, Southampton and Chelsea, I would be more than happy to take seven points from that. Beat Leicester, beat Southampton and even take a point from Stamford Bridge is pretty good in my books. Uh, just before we move on to that last game, what what would, like, obviously you want nine points, that's the the ideal outcome, but what do you think about seven or what what do you think is the most realistic outcome? All, so they, pen, pending, we have a full team. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're saying what is most realistic, Probably seven. And I t- trust me, I'll take that. If you turn around and said seven, you get the point at Stamford Bridge, I'd say, yeah, fine. But we should be aiming for nine. There's no reason why we won't aim for nine. Like, we just have that bit of quality. And we probably we won't have the full team for um for Leicester with this Brazilian nonsense, right? But we'll have we, we'll have a back out. We'll have a back out for Chelsea. We'll have a back out for Southampton. I don't see why we won't come out with nine points. But it's, uh, like, if you turn around and say, do you want seven? Yeah, I'll take seven. I don't mind drawing at the bridge. Yeah, seven points. A point at Stamford Bridge would be fantastic. Um, just don't give them any 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 lead in the league on us. You know, try to keep it as tight as possible for as long as possible. Um, and then probably similar to last season, uh, whatever team out of that suggested top four that could potentially win it goes on a big long run will most likely win the league. Cause that seems to be the pattern. It's, now in the Champions, the sorry, that's been the same for the last couple of years. Now Liverpool went on that run. We went on a run seventeen, eighteen. Like it's just that much. And just before we go on, that thing you said about. 
once they don't get once if we get the point they don't say that Carragher said that a couple of years ago as well uh, when Liverpool when, when Liverpool held City to the draw that's what it is you have just once your rivals aren't when it doesn't matter what happens once your rivals don't win you can capitalise then afterwards you're golden yeah oh absolutely couldn't agree anymore um, just keep it as tight as possible don't give them an inch uh, and keep going week by week but listen we spoke about Leipzig being a potential banana skin but like on paper and realistically you would be hoping to beat them at home like you would like we're, we're good enough to beat them at home and pending we do beat them this final game of the month which is the, the last one we're going to speak about is PSG away now this is undoubtedly the toughest game of this Champions League group um, probably not as important as the, the, the game before Chelsea away uh, in terms of how, uh, what it will, the significance for the remainder of the season, but it is uh, still going to be a statement setter, and you would think PSG and ourselves will be fighting for first place. Now, let's not forget this is not at all the PSG team. We'll do sorry before I go on. We'll do a more in depth preview at the time, but I want to talk about this briefly because it is such a mammoth game. This is not at all the PSG team we knocked out of the Champions League semi final. Uh, just a few months ago, we remember that very fondly. We did fantastic watch along that night. We had great crack. That's this team, ever. yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. This team has now got obviously the best front three in the world. They've, they've added Messi, Ramos, Donnarumma, Hakimi, Wijnaldum, uh, who am I missing? They've added superstars. They've had a, a FIFA career mode summer, and they will be more than ravenous to get their revenge on us and beat us. I, I, I know PSG do have a decent atmosphere. Uh, so I'd say it'll be absolutely raucous in Parc de France that night. It's a game I'm really excited for because I think even if we were to lose it, it's not the end of the world. Um, I'd fancy us to beat them in Manchester, call me arrogant, uh, but and I, I would at the very least fancy us to get second place in the group. Dara, Messi, PSG. The monsters are back anyway. They're at, they're, they've set up, like they haven't even spent that much this summer, obviously, excluding the wage bill, they haven't spent that much at all and it's fucking frightening. Like, that team that they're after us and terrifying. They should be winning. But we're going to turn around. We're going to, I know they brought in Amos to Brian Messi, but I'm still turning around looking at that semi-final and seeing half of the boys losing their head trying to break people's ankles because they don't have the head for it. Now, one or two players can't completely change that mindset. That's the only thing I'm holding on to at the minute that will tell me they're not going to win it. But, like you said, you said you might sound arrogant when we get them in their way. Like, that's not sounding arrogant. That's just being like, we have one of, the, one of, if not the best squads in the world. We can beat them. Of course we can beat them. I don't think it's a question if we can beat them. It's if we go out, play the same system. Like, if we played that system we played against them last year, we'll, I think we could easily wipe the floor with them again. Like, I know that sounds arrogant, but they're just, for, like, they're a good team, but it's going to take a while to gel. We've seen it with plenty of teams. It's going to take them a while to gel properly. All these, like, I'm not saying a lot of them have it, but a lot of them do have egos. I'm not saying all of them have egos. A lot of them do have egos. It's going to take them a while to gel with other world class players. It's, it's a, it, it comes at every team. Like we saw in 1920, we got a couple of boys and we got Rodri and we got Cantelo and took them a while to gel. This, like, they could have a rough t- teething period and this could be a time where we can just get them. If we can get, because like Messi hasn't played much. I'm not sure how much Ramos has played. Neymar, I don't think he's played much either. But <clears throat> this is, this fixture here, where they're not 100% gel together, we can easily get them. Yeah, I mean, there's still quite a few weeks to go between now and then. But yeah, you know, you're right. They're, they're, they're a relatively new team. We've seen plenty of teams like Chelsea when they were first assembled, when they spent over the 250 million. Uh, 12 months ago. It took them some time to gel together. But listen, yeah. this is going to be an action packed month topped off with two mammoth fixtures in Chelsea away and PSG away. But it all starts uh, at the time of this being released today against Leicester away, you know. Uh, we want to set the tone. We want to get three points and carry that on to Leipzig in Southampton. Uh, take on that huge challenge in Wickham and then of course you know massive ones Chelsea and PSG that is our September preview we will do one of these at the start of each month and give you our thoughts and you know in terms of blockbusters I think it doesn't get more exciting than this for the first real month of the season last season we started off slow uh, this season we'll ride off Tottenham two fantastic performances in Arch and Arsenal let's keep the momentum going let's bring it into September let's bring it into October uh, and let's really go for it let's give these teams uh, something to fear anyway leave your thoughts on September down below what games are you most excited for what games are you worried about the most what players are you most excited about seeing does Lionel Messi scare you does he excite you uh, I, I'm very excited for all this Akin Fenwa Akin Fenwa Wickham Wanderers he's coming to the Eddie Head let us know all your thoughts on September down below we'd love to hear what you think and we will see you very soon good night and God bless